Hi parents, you might have just watched the video on area model or you might be tuning in for the first time. So students are learning how to divide larger numbers this week. You and I learned the standard algorithm, the long division method, and they will have an opportunity to learn that next week if they want to. However, it's not a skill that's um, mastered until sixth grade anymore. They introduce newer methods in fourth grade now, and I found from teaching that students tend to like these new methods more than the traditional long division algorithm that you and I learned. So we're gonna start using these methods this week. Next week, if they're still stuck, they're happy um, and welcome to learn the long division method that we learned. I just am starting with the methods that they normally find more successful. Um, Please, on their homework, if they don't understand it, I would rather have them watch this video. If they still don't get it, just turn in blank, rather than you teaching them the long division algorithm. I'm afraid if they learn too many methods at the same time, it will just confuse them. So I'd rather have them turn in blank, no penalty. Um, so what I'm gonna show you in this video is partial quotients. This is a method that is a little different from area model, the other method I'm teaching this week, but it uses the same core concepts and builds on the student's understanding that division is repeated subtraction. So I'm gonna show you two examples on the board, one with a two digit number and one with a three digit number. I use the same examples in the area model video so that if you're interested in watching both, you can see how the methods connect. Students have had a chance um, this week to start to learn both and then pick one that they wanna focus on. So I'm gonna go ahead and show a few problems up on the board. Okay, I'm gonna start out with 64 divided by two. Oh, sorry about that. Or two times what equals 64. So I'm gonna to start to set it up like traditional long division. And I normally like to draw a line and you'll see why I'm trying to separate information on this side from information on this side. So on this side, I'm gonna be trying to pull out groups of two. Division is repeated subtraction. So the students are trying to subtract out groups of two until they get down to zero. Their answer will be how many groups of two they were able to pull out. So I'm always going to start by 10. If I pull out 10 groups of 2, 2 times 10 is 20. So that means that they can subtract out 20 from the total. They're left with 44. Now I have room in 44 to pull out another 10 groups of 2. 2 times 10 is another 20. I'm going to write 20 right here next to this 10 groups and I'm gonna subtract that out as well. Again, our goal is to get down to zero. I have 24 left. I can pull out another 10 groups. Two times 10 is 20. If I subtract that, I only have four left. That's not enough to pull out another, two, another 10 groups of two. But I do know that two groups of two will make four because two times two is four. And if I take away four, I'm left with zero. All problems that students do this week will end in zero. That means there's no remainder. Next week, they'll look at if problems do not end in zero and how to deal with that. But this week, all ends in zero, no remainders. Now, my answer is how many groups of two go into 64? This is my answer right here. I have 10, 20, 30, two. My answer is 32 groups of two. Now, you might be thinking, this is so much longer than the traditional long division algorithm, and it is but it tends to make a lot more sense to students and they tend to not forget it as easily as they forget the long division method. This is also not the shortest way to do this. We start here, after a while students start to notice, this is not very efficient. Why am I keep pulling out 10 groups and 10 groups and 10 groups where I could just pull out 30 groups at a time? And they're right. So our goal is for students to eventually be able to shorten this down. And when they solve this problem, after a while, they'll be able to think, what twos fact do I know that's close to 64? I know two times 30, right, 30G for groups, will give me 60. So if two times 30 is 60, I subtract 60, I only have four left. Well, I know two times two more groups would be four. I'm down to zero much faster than over here, and I still have the same answer of 32. So we start here, students will eventually get to here. Both of these are equally correct, but obviously this one will be a lot faster. However, in fourth grade, we're not really concerned about time as long as they're not taking 10 or 15 minutes to solve the problem. So if they need to do this for now, that's okay with us. Again, they don't really have to master this long division until sixth grade, so they have two more years. 
I'm also going to show you a three-digit example. We'll be working on these as well this week. We will eventually get into answers with the hundreds, but not yet. So I'm going to do 376 divided by 4. So now this would be one where it would be absolutely ridiculous to keep pulling out groups of 10 because I'd be keeping subtracting 40 at a time, 40 at a time, 40 at a time. That would take forever. So if students don't really know the shortest way, they can also start by thinking, what force facts do I know that are pretty big? So for example, they might know that 4 times 50 is 200. If I take away 200, I have 176 left. My goal is to get to zero. So now they might be thinking, okay, well, I know 4 times 4 is 16, so 4 times 40, that'll get rid of 160. That's going to be pretty close. Now I only have 16 left. Well, I know 4 times 4 is 16. Now I'm at zero. My answer is 50 plus 40 plus 4, or 94. This is certainly not the only way to solve it. It's one of many ways to solve it. But the good thing about this method is students can use what they know about multiplication and division to find a path that works for them. I'm actually pretty amazed at what they come up with. They come up with a lot of different solutions to still get the correct answer. Now, a faster way to do this, if I do 376 divided by 4, if I see this 37 tens, if I know 4 times 9 is 36, then I know 4 times 90 is 360. Right there, I'm only left with 16, and then I can finish quickly. 4 times 4 is 16. Get down to 0. My answer is 94. Students may use this method or the area model method to help them this week with division.